Welcome to class three, everyone. So today in class three, what we're going to be doing is painting the foreground of our painting. So just to review, the background was the sky. That was the farthest away. The middle ground was all those fuzzy branches and fuzzy flowers. And that was a little bit closer to us. And today what we're going to paint is what we call the foreground. And the foreground, of course, is the, the main point of the whole painting. So what you did up till now was really all pushed into the background, but what we do today is going to be the most important part of the painting. So I hope that today you'll listen and watch very carefully and that you'll slow down and do all of these steps as carefully as you can so that we have a beautiful bird by the end of today's class. So again, this is our last class and we're going to finish the chickadee today. So in your kit, you have two pieces of paper per person. The first piece is a template of your bird. Now I'm going to show you a way that we that you can trace the bird right onto the canvas, but some of you may wish to just draw the bird on your own. Now if you would like to do that, find the chalk that's in your kit and just freehand draw your bird. Now that's something you'll do if you really want to, to explore some, some more advanced drawing skills. But if you're not up to freehanding the bird, you are very welcome to trace it. And I'm gonna show you how to do that now. The second piece of paper that you're going to find in your kit looks like this. It's gray on one side and it's black on the other side. Now on the other side, you might find what looks an awful lot like our bird. And that's because we reuse these sheets of paper. Um, my kids, my students like to call this magic paper, um, but the real word for it is carbon paper. So here's what we do to trace the bird onto the canvas. So follow along very carefully. Start by taking your carbon paper. That's black on one side and gray on the other. What we're going to do is put the paper in the middle of the canvas so that the black side is down and the gray side is up. So let's put it like that and then I'm going to show you. The bottom is where it's black. This is really important. Black on the bottom and then where you are looking at it you're going to see the gray side. What you want to do next is find some masking tape and tape it down at the top and the bottom. And the reason we want to tape it at the top and the bottom is so that it doesn't move. It's really important that this piece of paper does not move. So there we go. We've taped that down nicely. I'm just going to make sure it's really good and stuck and it's not going to move around. And again, the black side is on the bottom. So now you can take your bird drawing on this piece of paper. And what we're going to do with the, the bird facing up, we're just going to lay it right on top of the carbon paper, just like that. So make sure it's centered. The paper is a little smaller than the canvas, and that's okay. But just sort of put that bird right in the center of your canvas, and then tape it down again on two sides. Now I like to put the tape on these sides. One, two and then my carbon paper is taped top to bottom and this bird is side to side. And because it's taped on two sides, it's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to shift or slide around. If you um, can't find tape, don't do this step until you've found tape. Um, if you just try to hold them on and start tracing loose, what happens is they slide around and your picture does not work out if that happens. So they're nicely stuck. So now we need to find a pencil. And using our pencil, we're going to carefully trace every line on the drawing. So I'm pressing a little bit hard, like I'm putting a bit of pressure on it, but I don't have to press that hard. Like it's not like you have to really push. Um, just, I would call it a firm pressure. Now I've gone over this little spot here and I'll show you what has happened. If I lift up the corner, you'll see that the drawing is right there and it's exactly like it looks here. So your job now is to take your time, slow right down 
And if you need some soft music on to help you slow down and focus, that would be a good idea at this point. But what we have to do is so carefully trace every line on this drawing. Very, very carefully. Now it's important also that your pencil does not go off the lines. So we can't, we can't just do a really fast scribble. We have to slow it right down and we have to draw every line. Now here's a bit of a tricky thing with this step, is it's hard to tell what you've drawn and what you haven't, right? Because it's a black line and a black pencil, so it's a bit hard to see what you've, what you've done. And sometimes kids think that they've done it all, but they've missed a few spots. And then when they take the, the paper off, there's a few things missing, like it's missing a wing or missing a tail. So we want to be careful that we really check that we've done all of the the parts of the bird. So we're slowly and carefully going around every line. Take your time and don't rush. Oh, I went off the line a bit there. We have to be really careful not to go off the lines. Oh, don't miss anything. Here. And a couple of leaves. Okay, so I'm finished. But I'm not going to take my paper off yet because you want to double check that you've gotten all your lines. Now, one way to do that, if you lift up your canvas and sort of hold it up on an angle and look at it with a window on one side, you know how the pencil lines are a little bit shiny? They're shinier than the black lines. That allows you to kind of see what you've done and what you haven't done. So I'm just checking to make sure I haven't forgotten anything. And it looks like I've got all the lines. So give it a check and then when you're sure you've gotten everything, what we're gonna do is take these things off the canvas. So we'll carefully peel them off. And when they're finished, um, when you've got them off, you don't need them anymore. So you can throw this bird drawing away unless you want to keep it and color it. That's fine too. But the carbon paper, you can actually use it again and again and again. One of these sheets, you can do like 20 different drawings on and it will still keep working. That's the fun thing about carbon paper. So if you liked these tracings, tracing it that way, just hold on to your carbon paper. You can use it again. And you'll see from the back that I've already used these sheets many different times and they're still going strong. So here we are. I've taken the sheet off and the carbon paper off and I have that design drawn exactly the way it should. So let's take our time and do a really good job there. So before we start painting, I would just like to review how to properly care for your little brush with the point. We talked about this last week when we painted the branches, but it doesn't hurt to review. Now here's the, the brush with the beautiful point that was taken care of, and here's the brush that wasn't taken care of. And you can see that it doesn't have a point anymore. So you'll remember from last week, the reason this one doesn't work anymore is because somebody squashed it on the plate and went like this with it. So don't do that with your brush. Don't do any stippling. This is called stippling. Don't poke your brush. All that does is just destroys the beautiful tip that your brush should have and see how we can't paint nice neat lines with it anymore. So we're going to take very good care of these brushes and we will start by painting our branch. So in your kit you'll find some brown. This is called cinnamon brown from Dollarama. And we're just going to use our cinnamon brown to carefully paint the branches in. So every branch is going to be painted cinnamon brown. Actually, before we do that, hold on a second, I forgot to do one thing on the last step. Um, so remember how we talked about the paper was not as big as the canvas, and that's why these branches don't go to the edge? Really important right now to grab your pencil and just extend everything so that they go off the canvas. So we don't want these branches to stop. We want them to keep going until they go right off the side. Let's hear them click right off the edge. There we go. So one, two, three.
three, four, five little spots. So take a minute to do that now. And then we can start to paint. So brush handles up. That allows you to work with that beautiful tip, that nice point that you have. And the only way to do this is slowly and carefully. Try not to get overwhelmed when you see a lot of branches to paint because you just have to really slow down, take your time, and you will do absolutely fine. But something like this, like these branches, it's just so important to try to stay in the lines and to do as neat a job as you can. And that means slow and careful. Okay, so all my branches are painted in as neatly as I can. Remember, if there's a little bit of a mistake, don't worry about it because we can always cover mistakes with flowers later on. So there's no, nothing to worry about here. All right, our branch right now is all one color. It's one solid brown. And as a result, it looks two dimensional. And what we want to do now is add something that will make the branch look three dimensional. And here's how we do it. You've got some leftover cinnamon brown, and you've also got some leftover tan that we used to paint these branches. So you want to find your leftover tan, and you want to add a scoop of it to the brown. So there's my scoop of tan. Here's my scoop of brown. I'm going to carefully mix it. Now when we mix it, we also don't want to squash the brush, right? So you have to mix it very carefully. And it's just a tiny little pile that we're making here. It doesn't have to be a big pile. So we're going to mix it carefully, go really easy on your brush, until it's just a little bit lighter than this cinnamon brown. You can see from my plate we've got cinnamon brown and then this is just one little bit lighter. So using this mixture, what we're going to do is add it to the top of every branch. So this is a very subtle step, and I hope that you'll be able to see on the video what I just did. Um, maybe for the sake of the video, I might make it a little bit lighter for you, just so you can really see. I'm afraid it's not really showing up. So again, this goes on the top of every branch, like that. And what we're doing is we're imagining that the sun is coming from the top of the picture, and it's hitting the top of the branch and it's leaving the bottom of the branch in shadow. So this is called highlighting, and highlighting is nice. It makes it look very realistic. It makes it look like the light is hitting the tops, but it also makes the branch look like it's round. So when you do your highlighting, I sort of do it a little bit scratchy so that it looks like bark. Do you see how it's not like a solid line? You don't want it to be a perfect line. You almost want it to be like a, a bit of a start and stop that it feels like bark. So we're going all along the tops of every branch. If a branch goes up, like this one, it doesn't have a top, so you don't have to do anything there. So for this one, we'll put it all along there. Right? And this would be the top of this one. And this is how we make our branch look very realistic and very three-dimensional. So take a few minutes to do that step. Our next step will be to put down our blacks. So let's have a close look at the sample and ask ourselves, where do we see black? So I see black <clears throat> in four places. The first place is the cap of the chickadee. That's the most obvious place. The second is his little chin triangle. So they have a nice little triangle shape right under their chin. So cap, chin. The bottom half of the beak is also black. And finally, what we have is we have an outline of black around the patterns of feathers, both on the wing and the tail. So we're going to take our time to fill in those black places now. So you're going to grab some black paint and with your brush standing nice and tall, you want to carefully fill in these areas, these blacks. Again, if your brush is leaning like this, 
you're not going to get a nice neat line. So stand it up nice and tall. Just like that. Bottom of the beak. Chin triangle. So there's three areas. And the last area is all the outlining of the patterns on the wing. So this part's going to be a little bit tricky, but I know you can do it because by now you're used to working with your small liner brush. But just work as slowly and carefully as you can and fill in all of these shapes. So we're just doing an outline. And then there's, there's a line on the tail also. If you look carefully, you'll see that the tail loops up like that. That's where the line starts, right in that little corner. So take your time, and once you're done, we'll be ready to start filling in the rest of the chickadee. Our next job will be to, to block in this beautiful warm gray color that we see on the wing and the tail. So for this color, you get to make this yourself with the colors that you've got. So I need you to take a scoop of cinnamon brown, a scoop of black, and a scoop of white. And carefully mix that around, and you should get that nice warm gray color. So gray, if you're ever making gray in the future, it's a good idea to make it out of brown and black instead of just black and white. That gives you just a warmer, more natural look. So this is the gray that we're going for, if you can see that okay. Um, so it's a mid-tone gray, so I'll give you a minute to mix that. Remember to go easy on your brush when you're mixing. So once you have that color, here's where we're going to fill it in. We're going to put it on the tail. And do you notice that I'm not covering the black line that I made earlier? So we want that line to still show. Now say you accidentally do cover it, that's okay, because you can always take some black again and go over it if you accidentally cover it. But we're gonna stand our brushes nice and tall and fill in that tail. Same with the wing. We're going to carefully Fill all of that in. Trying as hard as we can not to cover up the black lines that we made in the step before. So this will work if your brush is standing tall and it will work if you're taking your time. So you don't rush and do the best you can. So there we are. We've got wing, tail, and we still have our black lines showing. So now that the wing and tail is finished, we are going to move on to the bird's tummy area. So before we start painting, let's have a look at what's happening here. The whole tummy area is brown, but what happens to the brown? Well, it goes from a dark brown, gets a little bit lighter, and it gets really light up the front. And this is because of the way the light is working. So it's darker down here because the wing is creating a bit of a shadow. So I'll walk you through how to get this effect working there. So again, we're going to be using our leftover tan. Take a scoop of that leftover tan. And you'll need some white on your plate also. So using my tan, I'm just going to start at the back end of the tummy. And I'm going to start by painting this in going to be a bit of a triangle shape. Now when I get up to about this point, I'm going to start to feather it out. So we're not going to go 
like this and stop it abruptly. See how that's an abrupt stop? It's like here I was and now it's stopped. We can't paint like this. That's not going to help. That's not going to blend nicely together. So as we get to this point, we have to feather it out like that. So I'm following the curve actually of the front of the tummy there. Like this. So it's all feathered out. So it's about that much of the dark. And now I'm going to take a scoop of white and add that to the tan. And again, we're mixing it very carefully. We don't want to wreck our brush while we mix. So now we have a lighter version and I'm going to sort of blend that into the other color, the darker color, like this. So do you see how they're blending nicely together? So it's like the dark color. We painted it like this and then the lighter color just goes in between and then you get a beautiful blend of the two colors. So try to get that happening there. When that's finished, we're going to add, see how I feathered it out up here too. So now we're going to add more white to the same pile. And this will take us all the way to the, to the top. So we're going to feather and blend that shade in like this. And what we're going for is a beautiful blend. What we don't want to see is a stripe and then a stripe. We want it to go naturally from one to the next. And then here's the front of the tummy. I tried to cover the, uh, the pencil line that we made with the carbon paper just so that there's not a black line still hanging around there. And that's all we need to do for the bird's tummy. So using the last color that you used for here, let's also do the top of the beak, the top half of the beak. And then if you can just kind of wipe your brush clean a little bit, we're also going to do the white that's on his face. So very carefully, this whole area here is white. Sometimes, um, you need to let it dry and do a second coat, but just kind of depends on how your paint is working for you. But typically we can do it in one coat. Let's say it looks a little bit streaky and a little bit pale. You can always let that color dry and then do another coat on top of white. Okay, the little eye goes right there. And here's what we do with the paint that we still have on our brush. All we do is touch it once. Don't start trying to make an eyeball. Um, that will actually kind of ruin your painting. So you'll see what I did. I just came in and I touched it one time and then I left it alone. Please don't overwork your eye because uh, I've seen those get a little bit scary sometimes. So at this point, our bird is finished and all we have left to do is the flowers and the leaves. Now I'll show you how to paint the leaves. Now. These little containers that I'm putting your paint in, these are the last three that I have. And ideally, I was going to give everyone some dark green and some light green. But because we are now out of these guys, I'm just going to give everybody one green. And then we're going, I'll show you how to make a lighter green by adding white to it. If you happen to have in your craft cupboard a dark and a light green, use those instead. It's kind of nice. This is um, Christmas green from Dollarama, and that should that's actually the color that's down here. So what I've got on my plate is a green, and then I've got some white, which will allow me to make a lighter green like that. So see how I've got a dark green and a light green. Now the way that the leaves are formed is the bottom half of each leaf is darker and the top half is lighter. So this is how we do that. Bottom half, top half. And that's a really pretty way to make the leaves look more three-dimensional, more realistic, is to put darker green at the bottom and lighter green at the top. So let's take a minute to fill in all those leaves. 
dark at the bottom, light at the top. And if you happen to have a leaf that doesn't have a bottom or a top, like this, which is standing up, just pick one or the other. I'm just going to paint this all with the darker green, just like that. All right, so these are the ones that we have drawn on, but if you look at the sample, you're going to see there's a lot more. And this is because you get to get creative and put them wherever you think that your painting needs it. So I've put a couple more smaller ones here and there, and these are like little buds. See how they're not as big as these ones? So let's put a few cute little, little leaf buds here and there, wherever you think your painting needs a few more but these ones should be nice and small. So I'm gonna put a few more coming up this side as well. Tiny little budding leaves. Like that. So I've done darks on the bottoms. Now I'll put a bit of light on the tops. I hope you can see that. With the, there's some funny shadows here. There we go. So have some fun painting your leaves. Again, if you happen to have this color at home, then it will look a little different. It'll look like um, it'll just be slightly darker on the bottom, which really helps with the three-dimensionality as well. So you can give that a try if you've got it. So now we should go clean our brushes because the very last thing is to paint the flowers and they need to be white. So let's get our brushes nice and clean. All right, so if you think back to when we made these fuzzy flowers, remember how we started with a dot in the center and then we pulled the petals out from the dot and we didn't paint like this. Okay, so don't paint your flowers like this. I know you want to, but just trust me, take my word for it. Don't make them look like that. So we've still got lots of pink left over. So the method for each flower is to start with, I'll do this one, a pink dot in the middle. And then you want to pull your five long petals out from there. So these flowers can actually be quite a bit bigger than you think. So have a look at how big they are here. But they're really part of the focal point of the painting. So don't make these tiny little wimpy flowers. You really want to make a statement with the flowers. So one, two, three, four, and five. So each flower is going to be pretty much the same way that you formed the ones in the background. So again, a little dot of pink in the center, and you're going to pull out five long petals. Remember we said these were the shapes of jelly beans or sausages, but they're nice and long and they're nice and big. So your eye is going to tell you where to put your flowers. If you would like to copy the sample, you can or you can put the flowers wherever you would like to put them. So take a few minutes, um, get your paint, get some fresh white out, and enjoy painting those flowers. And once your flowers are finished, you are done your painting. So congratulations on finishing it well. Um, if you need to add another coat of white, um, sometimes students find that it's just a little bit see-through. Don't add that coat until the first coat is dry. So you want this to dry completely and you can come back in and sharpen everything up. So that is the end of our class. I'm glad we could finish this um, via video. And if you can ask your mums to send me pictures of how your paintings turned out, I would love to see them. So thanks for painting along and you guys take care.